Welcome back, audience, to the Cyber GPT Plus podcast. I'm your host, Mohamed Ilyas Ahmed. I'm your co host, Sayyad Amiruddin. Well, uh, today we, uh, we will be del- uh, delving into the, the transformative realm of quantum computing uh, and its profound impact on the security. So, from the algorithmic perspective, how the shift is going, hap- it's happening in infrastructure adaptations. And the discussions have been in place to explore the evolving landscape of the post-quantum cryptography. So let's start with the brief introduction. So Amir, why don't you go ahead and like you know give a quick brief uh, introduction about the quantum computing? Yeah, sure. So um, we can imagine a powerful computer which is harnessing some uh, uh, randomness uh, based on quantum com- quantum mechanics and especially it's uh, in a nutshell it's very useful for solving problems in seconds and quantum computing if we want to define it's uh, a field of computing that uh, use the quantum mechanics to uh, certain to perform certain types of uh, uh, computation more efficiently than uh, uh, classical computing and in we, we can have a technical detail of qubits those qubits is essentially uh, provide you multi-stage or multi-level uh, multi-level computation in the same frame which helps to make the con- computation even faster so that's the con- in the context of uh, security it's it can be very potent and have a very significant impact on current mm-hmm. uh, encryption method, whether it is RSA or uh, SHA, uh, which which is mainly dependent on the uh, the uh, difficulty of breaking them in a huge huge uh, computation power. So these are, this is a double-edged sword for uh, uh, cyber security in various ways. Well, like uh, that's that's a good point. Actually, you brought it up from the encryption methods. But on the other hand, uh, there are quantum computers which have the potential to uh, revolutionize the cryptography, and they're kind of faster code breaking. So let's say Short's algorithm for for an integer factorization way way be coming along with. So the one of the most important significant threats posed by the quantum computers is Short's algorithm. Uh, because they have got a lot of factors and integers behind, uh, which currently, uh, like you know, uh, kind of uh, uses the asymmetric encryption algorithms such as an RSA, which completely rely on the difficulty of factoring the large numbers uh, for their security. Now, if I want to break it down uh, to the RSA and ECC, the elliptic curve cryptography, so these are commonly used for secure uh, communication and digital signatures. So the Shor's algorithm can break, uh, uh, like you know, could break the security of RSA as well as the ECC uh, by quickly factoring the large numbers used in their key pairs. So this could expose sensitive data, financial transactions, and even national security threats as well. Um, and and uh, going a little further ahead, uh, enhancing enhancement of security tools like quantum key distribution that we know like QKD. Uh, it's it's also it also offers potential solutions to enhance security, but then the key distribution is method that uses quantum properties to secure communication channels. Um, um, and also QKD allows two parties to produce a shared random secret key, which can then be used to encrypt and decrypt the messages, um, and providing a level of security that is theoretically immune uh, immune to the quantum attacks. So it's kind of we need to develop. The every like in you know, security tools need to develop a post quantum cryptography PQC algorithm, uh, which is kind of immune to quantum attacks, uh, could create even more secure communication channels between these uh, tools. And talking about the post quantum cryptography, uh, it anticipates the threat which are which are being posed by the quantum computers these days. So researchers are actively de- de- developing the post-quantum cryptography algorithms, though. But uh, these algorithms are designed in such a way uh, which can res- resist attacks from both classical as well as the quantum computers, ensuring the continued security uh, uh, security of the communication and data in this era of the quantum computing. So, so this is like you know, but there are few impacts of quantum computing on cybersecurity where, like you know. Where if you want, you can shed some light on it, Amir. 
Yeah, of course. And uh, you rightly pointed out the uh, the essential uh, requirement of having post-quantum cryptography uh, ready, as uh, many of the companies are looking to uh, deal with that, because uh, not just emphasizing on uh, having all having the encryption vulnerable because uh, with with the various uh, vulnerable spectrum we are relying on these algorithms especially we have to be prepared if if or when did that happen because already uh, on a theoretical level we can see the uh, quantum the existing uh, quantum computer are able to break a couple of algorithms so we can we can have the spectrum in, in based of high, moderate, and low risk. For the high high risk, the RSA and elliptic curve a digital signature algorithm, which actually relies on mathematical problem solvable, um, much can be solved much faster by these quantum computer. So they are in very high danger range. And for AEC, for AES and other symmetric key algorithm which are not directly um, not directly impacted because they are not uh, they are not um, based on certain uh, uh, certain factorization uh, algorithm so in that case uh, quantum computer will be st still able to break them through the brute force de decryption but uh, we have to in that sense uh, the security mechanism need to look for the vulnerabilities under aggressive attacks. So if there is a very noisy attack, then these uh, can be still detected. And the uh, other, other low risk uh, low risk algorithms are essentially the PQC algorithm itself. The post quantum algorithm are relying on lattice and uh, code base, essentially relying on mathematical problem currently believed to be resistant to quantum, uh, quantum attack. So I just want to Pointed out here that in last, I think in 22, uh, NIST uh, proposed a uh, five uh, quantum algorithm, which was uh, assumed to be having uh, quantum resistance. But one of those uh, five algorithms are already been broken out in academic research. So these need to be uh, retested. We can think about, th we can have them in the low category uh, risk, but still they can be also. Uh, believed to be, uh, they cannot be believed to be totally resistant to this quantum attack. So in that horizon, NIST uh, is working through in the right direction where we can finally have the proactive approach to transit for transition in these quantum safe uh, cryptography. And while this PQC um, may require a very large key size and uh, having significantly low performance. So there is significant uh, high trade-off, especially for a supply chain where we are already having challenges uh, running these uh, high key size uh, uh, existing, uh, existing encryption mechanism. So how we can um, make shift to these PQC algorithms for IoT devices. It will be again a debatable um, debatable trade-off. So there are a couple of organizations which are working in this direction. So we can we have to wait and see whether how that um, that trade-off of high key mechanism, high key size to the existing short storage in in IoT device with the performance can be managed. Well, absolutely. Um, like, you know, uh, there is another exciting uh, uh, development with the intersection of the opportunities of the quantum computing for the cybersecurity. There are positive and negative negative ways where we can revolutionize the potential uh, in the early stages. But then, like, you know, so if you want to see the potential consequences of this quantum, uh, there will be a crack in our security armor, meaning uh, there are data breaches on steroids. There are financial meltdown in the minutes and the national security are under siege and as well as the uh, beyond the obvious that's what like you know the consequences can go beyond uh, which are readily imaginable um, meaning hackers could disrupt critical uh, as well as the uh, uh, like you know the critical as well as the low low lying like infrastructure powered grids and atc is the air traffic control systems which are being compromised with the control software by the uh, by the adversaries 
So this integration, uh, mm, uh, this integration of the elections could be challenging as well as kind of a noting system which can fall prey to the condom attacks. And the other hand, there are possibilities uh, which can va which have a vast as well as a potential widespread of the uh, like you know uh, widespread in this in this real world scenarios. Uh, but there are other chaos as well. Like let's imagine like encrypted online communication where medical records and financial data are laid bare. So the quantum power decryption could unlock a treasure of love, a treasure of uh, trove of personal information, uh, which can expose individuals to identify theft, financial fraud, and even physical harm. So hackers could manipulate the medical record, steal intellectual property rights, or unleash the waves of targeted scams, which can like, you know, uh, uh, which can try to like, you know, compromise the entire data, all thanks to the quantum edge again. Um, but again, the from the financial meltdown, uh, perspective. If, if 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 I had to speak, then our financial infrastructure relies heavily on secure transaction these uh, these days, meaning which are protected by RSA as well as the AES encryption. So a quantum fueled hack, uh, could wreak havoc on online banking, uh, and stock markets and the cryptocurrency exchange. Imagine, let's imagine a stolen credit card number. So there are many ways you can manipulate the financial records and dis disrupt the digital payments leading to widespread economic instability and as well as like you know panic in the in in, in the users um you now coming to the natural uh, national security under sage so it's something governments use classified communication channels so now but obvious we have vpns for the virtual private network communication but again the secure database is protected by the advanced encryption so with quantum decryption uh, uh mechanism which where military strategies and diplomat, uh, diplomat uh, secrets can be exchanged. So uh, th they need to jeopardize the national interest and potentially endanger endangering international relationship with with uh, with the other territories. So the ability to the eavesdrop on sensitive communication and manipulate the critical data could tip the scales in the, in the global conflicts these days. Um, so probably like you know there are widespread technologies we can be used but slowly uh, like you know there is an ai system which can essentially prioritize the use of privacy and security uh, as well through the development and deployment of ai technologies whether uh, it's thorough anonymization techniques or robust encryption protocols sure so uh, yeah these are perfectly fine use cases and when when we have quantum computing in hands of public then we will see these use cases in real life not ranging from medical to financial to military establishments so essentially the post quantum uh, future uh, future readiness should be test and uh, the checklist of uh, ready, uh, PQC or post-quantum readiness should be available with each and every organization and the challenges of uh, transitioning to a PQC such as having new infrastructure and standards is uh, paramount to the success uh, for such a transition so that essentially these uh, uh, these challenges or these transition will be having challenges including uh transrise standardizing new secure algorithm which can ensure interoperability uh, with existing system as well as uh, uh, as well as managing key effectively uh adapting infrastructure addressing resource requirement navigating uh, the period of um, current vulnerability through through the switch so essentially if we if a current organization is a automobile organization and it's it's uh, having the uh, the communication device like uh, the dcm the communication module which is having mqtt communication with iot pipeline in that sense uh, the current limitation is very low where the wi-fi or uh, the bluetooth uh, bluetooth uh, transmission data data rate is very limited having to manage a certain key size of a quantum uh, quantum resistance uh, cryptography is a huge headache so even though you are managing a pki that pki even you, if you are currently upgrading a pki right now then in that sense your vendor should be having 
certain PQC readiness. And whenever you can upgrade to that PQC readiness um, with your vendors, that should be perfect. But in in sense of in sense of not having those vendors which are not ready, like DG Cert is one of the vendors which is quite good. Good, but there are other vendors also working toward the same same area, but. I, I know for the sure that I don't want to take the name, but there are certain cloud services which are not ready in this sense, but they are looking to looking forward to that. So right now, if anyone is um, looking to pick a certain asset management or the PKI, then they have to make the trade off so that the integration in the later stage to the infrastructure should be more seamless. Uh, with obviously the consideration of budget will be always there. So uh, successfully managing these challenges require the collaboration between uh, cryptography uh, in industry uh, stakeholder, the regulatory body like NIST to ensure secure transition while maintaining reliability of digital systems. So uh, we will also encourage the listener to uh, to start looking into the practices of you know, cybersecurity practices, which will be impacted by quantum computing. So as quantum computing will and in advance, it it is uh, it will be proactively impacting the current practices as we have seen with various technologies, the shift of challenges and shift of uh, shift like if you even if you see OAP top ten, always there will be change with OAP's IoT. Top, I have top 10 and now even our top 10 for uh, LLM has been also designed. So these changes of practices need to be also checked and we need to be updated with the uh, with the shift to shift to handle these challenges in algorithm selection, um, infrastructure adapt adaptation for key management uh, in place with the uh, resource requirement as the certain company or certain organization is required to demand. So you can make a better recommendation whenever you are on the panel for such a selection for your own product. And as that these things will go along with uh, initiating, uh, initiating and enabling individual and organization to stay up uh, for staying uh, Proactive, proactive approach in securing the digital landscape against uh, emerging these emerging quantum threat. So stay informed and stay engaged in discourse and be prepared for the future of quantum secure cyber security. Well, uh, <clears throat> that's a great point you put. You have put it up. So yeah, definitely bias is a critical issue in the quantum. So specifically when it comes to uh, comes to training a data and an algorithm in the quantum. So decision making as a researcher as a, or a practitioner, so like you know the, the the decisions should be mindful. We need to be mindful of going biases present in our data and takes a step to mitigate them. That's all. Uh, the we can we can like you know uh, we can diversify we can diversify the data sets and implement fairness aware algorithms in the quantum computing. Well, well, well. Uh, so buckle up as we embark on the journey to the cyber realm. So uncovering the threats and opportunities that lie ahead. So don't forget to subscribe because the Cyber GBT Pulse uh, podcast channel electrifies your cyber security knowledge viewers. So well, that's all for this week. And thanks for watching this episode. Uh, the contact information is in the show notes. If you have any questions, comments, or topic that you want us to discuss in the future, feel free to email us. Until next time, stay safe and secure. Yeah. Thank you, audience, and see you next time.